Thank you, guys. And uh, Mr. Cameraman, please uh, get a zoo a close up here on Gillyweed sign because this is amazing. I mean, Gilly, you are probably the happiest person on the planet right now. I predicted last game with my brain, and I should have been predicting with my heart because that was fantastic. And we get to go to game three. And guys, in the last six matches, these teams have faced off. E Star has never been able to take a full match on a, a, away from MVP Black. And now they're one game away from doing it. And they didn't even play a hyper aggressive comp, as you mentioned. They had tools like the like the mighty gust coming in from Falstead. What was the secret this time? Why did they play so well? I, I don't even know what the secret was. <laughs> Everybody's yelling backstage. Everybody's going crazy out in the stands. I mean, they made the proper rotations time and time again. We saw on that last moment a barrel roll over instantly into a void prison. They knew they were going to get the kill. They waited. They had used the, the mosh pit to secure, secure a couple kills early, but they waited on it, and they landed perfectly right at the gate. I mean, just astonishing play. Every yeah. single step they made was perfect. Those and moshes. Just, just keep your flow, Jehow, and take us to replay number one because, boy, Boy, these fights were the most intense thing I've ever seen in Heroes of the Storm. I, I mean, right away, watch this. All right, to me. All right, Mighty Gust, everybody away from MVP. Zone it out. Now, here's the problem. Now, you see a little bit of damage going on up top. Now, that's not where the action is. We'll go ahead and let it go a few more frames. Now, here's where the problem is. Now, stop right there. Sake decided he was going to go ahead and poke a little bit. Deny. Remember, it's 2-2 two, two right now. This one secures the curse. The minute this happens, watch them collapse on Sake. Let's go ahead and run this forward. They are all just going to go hard on Gray. He has no escape. They go in, but they are not done yet. He dives back in, trying to secure a little bit. But on the backside, <laughs> pause it. This right here, this is what we couldn't see because there was so much going on. Four people. If he does not land all four, he dies, and this looks completely different. But he got all four. The Ancestral's coming in right there from Rhaegar, and this just, like, changed the entire fight. That mosh pit right there changed this entire game. We were actually, Dread was laughing because it was, like, obvious. The way the Observer scrolled up, it was, like, casual four-man <laughs> mosh pit. Yeah. No big deal. But, yeah, the moshes were on point. They knew mosh was going to be a problem because Brightwing took cleanse. You never Never see Brightwing take cleanse. That's how dire a situation was in Nitra, man. He made those mosh pits work. Yeah, there, there were a few dream mosh pits in there. And uh, E Star, it feels like, you know, if they get ahead, they can force mistakes out of MVP Black. That was a big mistake. I don't think they should have been trying to stop that tribute from happening. They should have just uh, have accepted that the curse was going to come. They were one talent down and they were going to be for a very long time. They tried to come in from multiple angles and Finally, MVP Black looked mortal here in this game. And uh, how do you like my prediction now? Even a broken uh, clock is right twice a day, boys. <laughs> 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 I mean, j Ho, before Todd's uh, pride of himself here gets overwhelming, let's actually rather look at replay number two. Yeah, I mean, this right here is something to behold. Here it is, right? There's sign, and then the mosh pit lands Ooh. right there. I mean, he held on to it to the very last minute. He could have held on to that power slide. He couldn't have held on to it, but he did. He committed. They dove in. The rest of the team was there. The barrel roll was what happened right before. The void prison that came in to isolate him there. I mean, just fantastic play all the way around. This was the beginning of the end. Two members went down. They realized, look at this, boss in the back, giants continuing to push. I mean, it was time and time again they managed to make that happen. I, it just, you couldn't have asked for a better game from E-Star. I think that was like 12 and a half minutes, maybe 13 at the most. I mean, that's incredible. That mosh, we were, we were getting rowdy. <laughs> Everybody was we getting crazy. We were getting rowdy. <laughs> we were cheering so loud. It was an awesome game. And, and this is a great series. It is an amazing series, Gilly. And what excites me the most is to see how MVP Black is now going to perform under pressure. We have never seen them dropping a map in this tournament. And talking of maps here, of course, the third and decisive one in this winner match is going to be Battlefield of Eternity, ladies and gentlemen. This is a small map. This is an action-paced map. And Gilly knows exactly why Easter loves this map. Yeah, they they want to turn up the aggression, and where better to do it again than a place where you fight for so long in the center of the battleground, while the objective rages on. Uh, I am I am super pumped. This is also yeah, it's Eastar's battleground pick too. So we're going somewhere where they feel familiar, and they're ready to Th finally take out MVP Black. Sky Temple, a lot of action for a rather large map. Cursed Hollow, a lot of action for a rather large map. <laughs> Guys, those maps just yeah. got shrunk down can, big Can we time. actually handle it? Todd, can you handle it? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I can. 
<laughs> I've never seen Todd that speechless and, uh, you know, excited about a game. It was but such a good game. Yeah, it, it really was. And here is draft number three for you guys. Uh, we see a ban on Falstead and we see a ban on Illidan. And this very first pick by MVP Black can be a crucial one. Do they once again go for a slightly aggressive uh, approach here? And the gray main so far tells us exactly that. Gray main so much on this map means that if it's a poke war, he can and he can stay reserved and stay back. But the minute it comes time to engage, we've said it all week long. Gray main on this map is, is what you want to have for poke, for engagement, whatever you choose to do. I, I love a first pick gray main. Yeah, the fact that we have been seeing MVP Black prioritize gray main so much, where they hadn't as much in this previous tournament really goes to show Whoa. that they understand how strong E-Star is with the hero too, and they want to make sure that, you know, there's these inter-team metas that develop, but yeah, talk about crazy first picks. What? No Li Ming, no Mistake, Kel'Thas. maybe? <laughs> we haven't seen Li Ming at all yet. Maybe, you guys maybe it's a that? Jimmy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not, going, not going to happen again. Opening up with Tychus, trying to discourage MVP Black to go into, I guess, multiple wow. warriors, but MVP Black wow. danced her with Kael, Tast, and ETC, and the draft is looking very scary already here for E-Star Gaming. I mean, Tychus worked wonders in the previous game. Let's not forget about that. But to prioritize him over a KT, over a, an ETC, can you believe it? I I, You're I, like I, I I just I wanted to. <laughs> this is exactly what they needed to do. Now they went ETC Kelthos. They have all the damage that they want, but the fact that they banned out Uther means that they pick up Rhaegar, or they already had Rhaegar, and now they have control of supports. They had control of supports last game, forced them into a right wing, which works on that map, but they forced them to go cleanse. They didn't have the shield, things like that. Yeah. They are forcing the action. Yes, the draft looks good for MVP Black, but this is a great ban phase for them. Yeah, yeah. E-Star has shown how much they like to try to choke uh, their opponent out with the supports, but MVP Black also wants to do it with the Warriors taking out Muradin after they picked ETC. But as we've seen before, MVP Black, Meriday has a wide hero pool of yes. supports he can choose. And similarly, E-Star play every warrior under the sun. So I don't think they're too bothered by not having Muradin they, here. They ran Morales. Yeah, in the right? game they, they, they did. On, on this map. On this map. Yeah. It worked out very well. I was actually wondering against a better team like E-Star how it would do. So hopefully maybe we get that answer here in this game. Thrall's kind of scary when you play Morales. Because yeah. if he gets a good flank with Sundering, all of a sudden Morales is in the middle of E-Star, which is exactly where you don't want to be. It felt like they were doing more or less kind of to counter tier on there, or like certain combos, right? Yeah, combos that can't get onto Morales. Yeah. It's going to be the ultimate showdown here. Meridays, Morales, potentially, or the safer route with Karazim, of course. He's also still available against the ultimate aggression coming in from E-Star Gaming. I think if Meriday is ever being tested on a different support than the usual Rhaegar or Uther, it's going to be shown in this game. Do you think that Tychus pickup was uh, an anticipation for a double warrior comp that might be coming from MVP Black? Or do you think this is actually something they had waiting to use? I mean, that's a very early pick. I don't think that I've ever seen an, a first pick Tychus. Oh, a long time oh, ago in the alpha, yeah. maybe. Wow, <laughs> and they're not done surprising us yet, guys. What? We have Stitches, and he is hungry, and he is willing to play with whomever MVP Black sends at him. This is either going to be amazing or it's going to fail horribly. <laughs> There's no in between. Oh, I remember the last time I saw Stitches on Battlefield. <laughs> what happened? You need a follow up. That's all we're going to say. You got to have some follow up for some stuns. But they do have Feral Spirit, and they should know that with their last pick potentially, too. What are MVP going to grab here? Who's the support going to be? And this is one additional threat to a Morales. I mean, she doesn't yeah. have a lot of mobility. One hook and it could be the end. So it wouldn't surprise me to actually see a Karazim coming out instead. Also to potentially uh, windle down that stitches faster with the seven-sided strike. Right. I was wondering about yeah. seven-sided strike as well. Could be very strong there. And then yeah. they close things down with... Uh, what do you guys think about a Tassadar? Doable? I kind of wonder that sure. too. I think with this comp, it would work really well. And the fact that they can protect Grey Mate if he goes in or... Yeah. Oh, similarly, or, similarly, yeah, similarly, right? Yeah. You, or you add in vulnerability to, to Grey Mane, um, similar to the, to the style we saw before with Sanctification or Divine Shield, adding with the Grey Mane, allowing him to be a little bit stronger, be a little yeah. bit further into the back line. But remember, they first picked Tychus, so they do have damage to deal to Warriors. I like the Turiel pickup here because not only do you protect Rayman with your Sanctification, but you also give him free movement in a Putrid Bow, which is ever so crucial in these areas around the Immortal. Uh, there's just uh, this draft, 
Uh, as much as we wanted to say one team won the draft or didn't win the draft like before, I don't know. This is game three, one to one. That draft right there, I I'm not picking a side on draft. I just no. I. I'm it's too bad you're going to have to in the predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Hook force wall, though. I, I, I hope for a win. Yeah, actually, in terms of combo, I feel like they, obviously they're going to have to rely a lot on the hook, right? Mm -hmm. As always. Hook, when you have force to, yeah. wall, and just try to blow somebody up the, very quick. The problem is, is that Greymane has a disengage. Kel'Thas is the only one without true yeah. mobility. Uh, ETC power slide, Karazim mm -hmm. dash, uh, Eldruins for Tyrael. So I, I think there's a lot of escapability. So you have to land the right hooks and you have to have the right amount. Can Thrall get the follow-up? I think that's going to be the main question to try and get that stun totem. Not a hard counter. It's, a, it's enough to get a slow, but they have to have follow-up. If they don't have follow-up, that Stitches pick is going to come back and bite them. And now it's time to do exactly what Todd has foreshadowed. It is time to get to the nitty gritty and actually predicting who is going to take home this winner's match in Group A. Todd, what do you think? The draft is really funky, but I mean, after that last game, there is no way in hell I'm going to predict against this <laughs> Todd. They're going to win this, man. <laughs> and Lady Gilly. Yeah, I've got to vote for E Star. I don't, even though I don't know about the stitches, that last game was epic. Mm -hmm. They deserve it. I pick uh, whoever wins. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I don't have as much faith in Stitches. I'm going MVP Black. And uh, I, had, I hate to actually just switch sides like this. I'm just going to stick with my man Jay Hao and uh, predict that the Korean overlords are actually going to take it home. MVP Black is going to be my personal victor. However, there is one more game to play and one more round for Cardo Caldor and Wolf to cast. So don't go anywhere and listen to these handsome young fellas. One more game to cast, and I don't know about you, Wolf, but I'm certainly ready for this I'm getting one. pretty hyped. Yeah. I'm getting, like, a <laughs> little bit excited. I'm, Just uh, a tiny bit. Yeah. It's, it all comes down to this. Asia versus Asia, the biggest rivalry we've had in Asia, and some might argue the biggest rivalry in Heroes of the Storm eSports. Let's jump into this game here on Battlefield of Eternity. I'll read off these MVP Black players for you guys. Karzim is being played by Mary de Kyocha, Ontario Sake being uh, playing Kael'thas, Rich on Greymane. So... Uh, we're actually seeing uh, that Rich actually take a different role here and sign, picking up the ETC. And to the right side, it is Eastar with a victory on the last map. They run a Tiger on the Rega, Shao Ti on Thrall, Tumi on Tassada, Jingzi on Tykes, and NCCCC on Stitches. And it is an interesting comp that we have here, especially with that super early commitment to Tykes. Let's just be honest here, they would have gotten their Tykes no matter when they picked him. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like they really, really want it. Um, and I do worry about the, the Stitches pick that we have here, as we do see a big rotation up here to the top lane. May get punished! This is where Stitches is going to be his strongest in the early game, is overextensions. And MVP is actually going to have to take the long way home. They don't even throw the hook out. They're saying like, all right, we lost the tower, that's totally fine. We burst away the bottom wave, and then we make the rotation happen. Right now you see Thrall just going straight down to the bot lane. But they are going to run a couple of rotations apparently on the map. They're trying to trap, they're trying to hook. And they're not going for the traditional 4-1 before Immortal number one spawn. Look at Rich's positioning here. He's trying to bait a hook so hard here. For look at ETC Science's position, in. yeah. Yeah, the ETC is, is being... Look at this, total bait here. But E-Star plays too safe. They're not able to find anything. Kyocha is rotating up with that wave, though, from the bot. Thrall knows he's missing, so this shouldn't get too much done. But here he comes. Now, we have seen a couple of times already all the Tyka's damage. And it was pretty impressive in the previous games when they used it. We're going to find out if they can make the same thing work once again. Level 1 with a shrug it off. They stay true to their colors. Dampened magic on Stitches. Kind of what you would expect here. I... <laughs> I'm already hyped for this game. I mean, this is going to be so good. First of all, we have a Stitches come out of Asia, which is always fun. And then we have that Tykes in play as well. I am loving it. I, I really do think that uh, the panel was very correct in predicting that the Stitches was a Morales denial pick. And hold that thought. We're going to have another fight here. Sign with the multi-stun. There's the Grand Labs to follow it up. And this combo has been the strongest combo yeah. of the tournament, Calder. This keeps happening. But going back to what I was saying, I think the Stitches pick was to deny Morales. And I think if Mary Day can play a good Karzim, it's all for naught. Right now, I have to admit that at this point, it really feels like especially that Kalthas and ETC is the biggest threat to Easter, And they have to be aware of this. I mean, they have been facing comps like this all tournament long. And of course, we've seen it in other games too. So right now, Easter showed with that draft basically that they're confident in working against it, but it didn't happen. So and once again, they're trying for it, but Sign missed the stun a little oh, bit. Oh no. Thrall just came back. 
He Bro, just came back to die. Jesus died, respawned, came back in, died again, and now he has to make the way into the middle once more. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a pretty gnarly game so far. Black totally controlling this first Immortal. We'll finish it with nearly 7k shields here, so that's going to be a strong first yeah. Immortal walking down lanes. and. The Stitches pick hasn't done anything from the early game, and why? Well, he doesn't have any escape, so if he gets stunned, he gets gravity laps, he gets caught. But it's actually Thrall who's been punished both times by this combo, and it's really starting to wear on E-Star in this early game, even though they're, they're oftentimes winning these lanes, uh, like these rotations Tumi is doing, for example, right now. Thrall is definitely, uh, like, doubting his life choices at this point. Besides that, on the other hand, we have for Merry Day on for the Protective Shield taken and Amplified Healing for Tyrael. So it's all about the sustain currently for the boys here. At the same time, In the Rhythm has been chosen once more by Tychus. It's the same build that they've been running the entire time. Chinese team with the defense at the bot lane here. Four against four, but that first Immortal is already getting some decent value. Oh, look at this. This is the problem with Stitches. He has no escapes. And if you stand just one centimeter over the line, you are going to die to an ECC kill DOS combo. In this case, Mostly just the ETC. Sign is a punishing player. Oh, yeah. And Toomey has taken a lot of damage here, too. It looks like he's going to be able to save his dimensional shift, but that was scary. I don't know about you, Wolf, but it really feels like Easter underestimated that Stunlock combo a little bit, and we don't even have heroics in play yet. I think this all comes back down to the support choke attempt. They're like, okay, Merry Day's been playing a lot of Morales when he doesn't get to play his Uther, when he doesn't get to play, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I'm drawing blanks on support choke, but he's been playing a lot of cars, you know, right? And it, they, they, or excuse me, he's playing a lot of Morales when he doesn't get Uther in comps like this. And they're trying to choke him out. He chooses Karazim here. He's totally fine with that. And I think they were hoping, oh, we're going to see Morales again. They did their research. But in my opinion, I think the Morales play we saw was a little bit of MVP Black kind of messing around, hiding strategies. And this time, they're totally fine to take Karazim at this point. Yeah, I don't, like, the thing for me is I doubt even a little bit that they were trying to ban out the supposed We can talk about it in a moment because at this point, the invasion on the camp at the top lane is still ongoing and MVP is committing for it. In comes Twitch into the back line. Down goes Tassada. Great kill here from Greymane. Jing Z moving back but the double kill as Thrall falls too. At this time, it feels like Thrall spent more time dead than in the game. Yeah, uh, he, he certainly has, right? Three deaths already this game, and just he's, uh, he's one of the higher impact heroes, as was mentioned on the desk. You know, if he can actually do follow-ups to hooks with this Feral Wolf, and if he's not there, that's just not a thing. Coming back to my point, by the way, for me personally, it really feels like they were probably more trying to get away from Uther so that they did not run into a mosh pit with Divine Shield. Because I just can't imagine that the team is really looking at an MVP Black and says, oh yeah, if we ban out Uther here, Meriday has yeah, a I problem. Mean, I mean, Meriday is one of the best supports in the entire world. He has, he has really the highest support pool, I'd say. And, you know, I, 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 I want to argue for you, but I just feel like the Stitches pick is just so wonky. You know, I, I, I worry about it and it just has not been paying off. Now he's actually sitting bot solo defending that push while, again, MVP Black going to get a free yeah. start on the Immortal. But to be fair, Stitches gets the most value on this map out of all maps because you have that free range for the hooks up at the top. Sign actually this time a bit in trouble, but if you look at the Immortal damage, it's again a reappearing trend. MVP Black with more damage on the objective. And but uh, just to highlight on your point, this is one of Stitches' best maps and also his power really comes in the late game. When you get a pick that's a, you know, 40 second cooldown or, you know, 40 second death timer, it's much more impactful than here in this uh, early game. So if he gets fishing hook, if we get, if this game goes that long, if you get those late game hooks, that can be a game changer. But right now, it's really, really a problem. Oh yeah, you're totally right on this. Like right now, they are definitely struggling. Here's the hook. Yes, no, it's the hook against Kelthas. That's the money hook right there, but it doesn't do anything for them. It's again thrall. At this point, he should just stay in base. Yeah, and it was basically just a hook into the grab lap. He's like, thank you very much. Thank you for making this combo easier. He's got Netherwind. Boom, down goes NCCC. Wow. Thrall is dead again already. Toomey in trouble here in the top, and he's actually going to have to <laughs> Uses his uh, shift to get away, it barely escapes there from t with Tiger's help. And I think that is going to be the end of this attack for MVP Black. In fact, Kyocha may have overextended narrowly gets away. <laughs> that was close. I mean, Jing Z just moving back in the last moment before the gravity lapse is about to hit him. But if you are, like, if Thrall has one FML moment after another in this game, he really struggles at this point. It's four deaths against him already, and it feels like no matter what they do, they fall behind. Think about how this started. Yeah, he and just gets the perfect hook against Kel'Thas, and it still turns against them. And this top fort is already dead. The bot fort is clear as well. This is a fully shielded Punisher, or excuse me, Immortal. No, we're only at seven minutes of the game, so it's not a ton of scaling going on to this, but it will have a large amount of ranged attacks to use. And this, you know, this it could take out a whole keep wall. They have 10. Yeah. 
So how are they going to deny this push? It's it's going to take the wall down at least, I'd say. Yeah. And if they lose anybody, this could be a keep. Exactly. I mean, we're looking currently at a two-level advantage, oh. and right now they are pushing with everything Look they have at, at the top. Look at that kill potential. They go for it. Seven-sided to the face, and Rega is dead. And that's that isolation that you can get with ETC. He just face melts into somebody. They're isolated. There's a seven-sided strike. And they, he didn't even have to use Mosh Pit to secure kills here. With that death, this is definitely a keep here. And it may be a keep before this Immortal's even out of shields. MVP Black is making Easter look incredibly bad right now. They are stomping them. What a beautiful game from the Korean team. No mistakes whatsoever. Perfect fight control, perfect decision making. And they go through a keep. Seven, eight minutes in the game and already on their way oh for a call. Oh my god, here what we is go. This Gravity Labs goes down. There's the Marshman as well. Thrill's already dead yet again. It looks like the next kill is going to be on the Rhaegar. NCCC does have some no sustain way. on him. They're diving a bit too far though. There's the heals. Oh no, they can't. Oh, no Stop way. Like this. They kill everything. That's it is game. eight minutes and 30 seconds against Easter of all teams. MVP Black is looking at the game. They're saying like, we're done with this. We go out of group, we take them down. Like, I don't know what I expected, but it's not such an amazing dominant performance by MVP you Black saw, against Easter. You saw an angry MVP Black there. <laughs> you took a game off of us. We're coming back hard, we're coming back wow. strong. And they punished the, the Stitches pick super hard. They were always getting picks on Thrall repeatedly. And Shao Ti, Really, the weak link there, and he got punished hard over and over and over again. One of the fastest games in this tournament. They had double support and still Thrall died over and over again. And I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable. The game, 8 minutes, 27 seconds. And Thrall, 5 deaths. 5 like, deaths in an 8.5 minute game with double support. Got caught too often. They only had one tank, and Stitch is usually in Asia a secondary tank if he's going to be used. And he got picked off early. He had three deaths himself. And it was just basically MVP Black outplaying that composition. And mind blowing. really, really godlike play from the Korean team, the defending champions. Absolutely mind blowing performance here. Yeah. I mean, we saw that second map, and all of a sudden it was like, can they do it? Can yeah. Easter actually take down MVP Black? It was scary there for a minute. And MVP Black was like, all right, guys, let's, let's put some effort into it this time. Eight minutes and 30 seconds, and I cannot wait to first of all hear what the panel has to say about it and also to see what kind of replays Jeho has prepared for us. All right, uh, we don't have much to say other than uh, the Koreans are still numero uno, at least in Group A, because they looked dominant, like a dominant wrecking ball. They came into this third game and they just waltzed over Eastar Gaming like it was nothing. It's just like stealing a lolly from a baby, pretty much. Like, this looked way too easy, Gilly, and I'm sorry to have to pick you first for this, but let us know what went wrong for Eastar. Um, well... Stitches it's hooks just... with not a lot of follow-up. Um, there was a lot of escape from the other team, like we highlighted before. Stitches was a problem. And Battlefield, like, Battlefield of Eternity, you have to watch out because there is this spot where if you lose the second Immortal and don't have your heroic abilities and aren't going to have them for a while and it's a highly shielded Immortal, it is a huge problem and it can result in a very short game like we saw. It almost feels as if they let a random fan here in the uh, a dream hack draft for them. <laughs> like Tycho's first pick, like we hadn't seen that yeah. since Alpha and then Stitches. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I saw Stitches winning competitive. Like it doesn't happen very often. It just didn't work at all. But Jay, how? Why don't you show us the first replay? I'm not sure if you actually found one, but I, I want to. I want to. <laughs> prime example. Stop it right now. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly what happens. Here's the MVP. Okay. Here's a hook. Going out, and it's going to capture Kael'thas. This is fool's gold. Stitches is fool's gold. Go ahead, run this in. We're going to see Kael'thas. Now, what do you do? Stop it again. Instantly, watch this. Every single person from MVP, when you have a Stitches, especially right here out in the open, as soon as he hooks somebody, you dive on him. Watch them collapse on Stitches. Just run it in slow-mo. Every single person instantly dives onto him. The power slide up. Every single person dives right onto it. Stitches, he is going to stay alive for a moment. But you can see, as soon as that happens, that's when the fight changes. It is fool's gold. That hook there, especially right into the middle of everything, that, that's a good way to get punished. And Stitches did, and the rest of his team paid for it. Yeah, Stitches in that moment definitely uh, took a, a little bit too much of a bite there. I mean, there More he is. he could shoot. Deleted. 
Yeah. I, I mean, over and over again. The minute everybody collapsed, I mean, they just pounded on them. Just absolutely pounded. I don't on them. understand what was the plan here exactly from Eastar. Like, it had nothing in common with their previous team comp. Of course, yeah. it's a different battleground, but why would you just throw over your entire concept? You you first pick a Tychus, giving... Tychus Rhaegar, yeah, you yeah. give away ETC, Greymane, and Kael'thas. Exactly. The draft. I, I mean, Jay Howe, let's actually go through the second replay and see what MVP did this time. I mean, what didn't they do is the question. I mean, this is going to be yet another <laughs> rotation up. Pause it right here. Sign's going to come in. He doesn't even have to use his mosh, but he's going to go ahead and power slide in here. And this is the beginning of the end. We'll run it forward. We're going to see Rhaegar get taken out here. And he power slides in, and they instantly pounce. Down goes Tiger, and that's the biggest thing. They follow up. This is the kill. And they were able to rotate this in. As Gilly said, look at the shield on the Immortal. He's going to continue to press. They already have one cannon tower down, and they continue to put the pressure on. Time and time again, Again, they punish them and that is exactly what this comp is built to do I mean that was just MVP black drafted perfectly and they played perfectly and stitches and Stein was proving a point uh, as well. He yeah. was like, you think you got mosh pits? That last one well, <laughs> was pretty good. doesn't actually matter. Uh, we're now being joined once again by Sake, uh, team captain, of course, of MVP Black, who just took down E-Star Gaming in dominant fashion. First of all, congratulations on this victory. Did you expect this game to be the strongest and hardest one in this tournament so far? Yeah, 어 uh, 일단 에이조에서는 가장 힘들 거라고 예상했어요. I thought that it was going to be the hardest game from group A. All right, you still won it though and very convincingly you might want to say. Now we asked you this during the first group stage at the studios in Stockholm. Uh, you mentioned that you're not fully charged up yet. Your power level is nearly at 100%. How charged up are you right now? 저번 스토클룸에서 조별 예선에서 그 파워 레벨이 한 35% 정도라고 했는데 지금은 이제 한 얼마 정도 올라온 것 같나요? 그 어, 이제 한 50% 정도 된것 같아요. 이제 많이 경험을 통해서 저희가 합도 이제 조금 조금씩 이제 부족했던 게 많아지는 것 같은데 아직 많이 부족한 것 같아요. We feel that right as of now it's only at 50%. We're trying to, we're getting better and better right. by playing a lot, but we still got a lot of problems to fix. Right. Did it upset you at all that they took a game off of you so you punished them in game three? <laughs> 그 혹시 이 경기에 지셔서 삼 경기에 그렇게 뭐 거의 뭐 볼주다 시피 하신 건가요? 네? 어 그건 아니고 이 경기가 저희가 약간 안 해본 거를 좀어 즉흥적으로 해봤어요. 그런데 그게 예상보다 많이 안 나와서 상 경기는 아 그냥 우리가 하던 거 하자라는 식으로 경기를 풀어 갔더니 그렇게 잘 나온 것 같아요. So in game two, we kind of tried out some of the, <laughs> the, the stuff that we didn't really have that worked. So in game three, we lost that in game two. So in game three, we just went back to what we were comfortable playing on. All right, final question, Gilly. So now that you guys are in the semifinals, um, who on from the other group do you think you might be meeting and who do you hope that you meet in the semifinals? B조에서 어느, 어떤 팀을 만나고 싶고 어떤 팀은 또 힘들 것 같나요? 어 일단 만나고 싶은 팀은 템페스트고 힘들 것 같은 팀도 템페스트일 것 같아요. 근데 그 팀을 꺾어야만 우승을 할수 있기 때문에 미리 만나는 것도 좋다고 생각해요. So the team we want to meet and the most challenging team is going to be Tempest because Chances are we're going to have to meet them sometime in the in the tournament to actually win the whole thing. So we want to meet them as soon as possible. So just get the trouble out of the way real quick. All right, nice. <laughs> so the grudge match from Korea, of course, is definitely a real thing to happen at some point, potentially. For now, Sake, congratulations. And uh, well, thank you very much for this dominant performance. I'm sure a lot of people out there learn something for their own Heroes of the Storm career. Now. Without further ado, we can actually take a look at what this bracket in Group A in the second group stage looks like because we're only one more series away until we close this stream for today. And it's not just going to be any series, right? We have the Chinese leaders or the Chinese force from E-Star Gaming facing the rising star that is Naventic. They have improved throughout this tournament. They are looking stronger than they did before. Jehao, do you think it is enough to take down E-Star Gaming? 
Eastar put up a much more challenge towards MVP Black than Naventic did in the first set. Admittedly, that was Naventic's first set in a, a week and a half that they've been able to play competitively. And Zuna just got here, you know, he was busy. Is it enough that they woke up in that second set to where now they feel the confident enough? Eastar, they looked good, and then they looked kind of rough in that last set. Is it going to be enough? I mean, I feel like Naventic has the talent. They have the potential. Can they shore it up and take it? I would love to see it, but Eastar looks really good right now. Yeah, and uh, without further ado also, of course, we once again would like to remind you that there is a special occasion going to happen very soon, namely from June 24th until June 27th, Blizzard decided to uh, spoil us a little bit with free heroes through, uh, during all these days, right? I think it's Friday to Monday. So grab your friends, put them into the Nexus and say, you know what, you don't even need gold because you can play all the heroes you want. Also. Big shout out to the Score Esports, your number one source when it comes to staying up to date in terms of news, scores, whatever's related to esports in general. So definitely give them a try and uh, use this app on your phone. I'm actually using it myself here. No shameless self promotion actually intended, but it's a pretty good app. So check it out and don't go anywhere, guys. After a short commercial break, we will be back with Team Naventic against Team Estar.